In the year 1963, in the south of modern-day Uzbekistan, there was a gas well and it exploded at a depth of two and a half kilometers. And after this took place, an insane amount of firepower exits this well. When the fire started burning, it pretty much burned everything in that vicinity and it was so powerful that you couldn't even try to put it out. When this gas well exploded, the amount of gas that was exiting it per day was 12 million cubic meters of gas. Just imagine the power of that flame. Of course, the amount of gas was very important and that got Russian experts thinking on how they can put this fire out. Any strategy they tried, they were unsuccessful because the flame was going stronger than ever. More than a thousand days passes, meaning about three years, and it's still going. To get a better understanding on what 12 million cubic meters is, you can imagine it like this. Put five massive cities together, that's the amount of gas they consume per day. So of course, it had the Russian officials angry that this much gas is being wasted. When you think of atomic bombs, you usually think about Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and destroyed cities. But it's good to know that most atomic bombs that were exploded and tested throughout the world, it was mainly for experimental purposes, not for warfare. And of course, the US and the USSR are the number one users. In the year 1960, the US started Project Plowshare or Operation Plowshare. And the exact reason for this project was to try and figure out if they can use nuclear weapons underground so they can access gas wells easier. Back then, they thought that something like this was a great idea and they didn't exactly realize how bad it is for the people that live around there and the people that are experimenting it on site as well. So most tests took place in the deserts of Nevada and New Mexico. And if you go in the middle of the desert, you'll most likely see some craters that were created by these underground atomic bombs. Don't get me started on the USSR because they did even more testing. The US tests were always in the news, but some of the USSR tests wouldn't even make the news, so they were mostly secretive. But we know that the Russians mostly did their testing in Kazakhstan. When the Soviets realized that they're not able to put out this fire after three years of trying, they started thinking outside the box. A group of engineers mentioned that the Americans had started Operation Plowshare and they want to use atomic weapons to access gas easier. So they thought to themselves they can do the same thing, but not to find gas, to put out this gas well fire. The engineers suggested to bring an atomic bomb and drop it with an airplane where it explodes above the gas well. But after this idea was thrown out there, a group of physicists came out and said, absolutely not. Because if you explode an atomic bomb above this thing, you're gonna have plenty more wells that are on fire, not just one. The physicists suggested the best way is to put the atomic bomb underground. Go down one and a half kilometer and the atomic bomb doesn't have to be that powerful. 30 kilotons to be exact. But 30 kilotons is plenty of power. The Hiroshima bomb was half that at 15 kilotons. The Hiroshima atomic bomb was one of the first ones. And the biggest atomic bomb we had was the Tsar bomba made by the Soviets at 58 megatons. That means 58 million tons. Just imagine how many times the power of the Hiroshima bomb is in the Tsar bomba. This is how we do the math. 58 million divided by 15,000 and you get something about 3,866 times the power of the Hiroshima bomb. So after the idea the physicists gave, the engineers started digging another well next to it and getting close to the actual well on fire at an angle and meet the original well at one and a half kilometers where there is no fire but there is gas feeding to it. When the well is ready, they lower the atomic bomb into it. And when it's all the way down there, 
they start pouring concrete on top of it. When everything was set up and ready, they set up all the cameras and got 5 kilometers away from the blast site. This is the fire they're trying to put out and it's not small. So when everybody was at a safe distance, it was finally time to hit the switch. The explosion is only seconds away. The camera feels the impact of the detonation. And the gas flame begins to subside. The fire is now out, so the mission was successful. But let's see what happened underground. The atomic bomb did its job very correctly. It basically destroyed the gas well and prevented from more gas from flowing upwards. And all the debris and dust created shut it down. And a fire that was going on for more than a thousand days was put out in 23 seconds. When the fire was over, of course all the engineers and experts came to the site to see how successful the mission was. They didn't have any proper gear and it seems like they didn't know much about the radiation compared to what they know now because they weren't wearing the proper clothes. Although it is 1966, they should have been more careful about what they're doing in a place like this. And after they did this, in a very short period of time, they began working on there to build another well down there so they can collect the gas. A few years after this, very close to this original gas well, there was another one called the Pamuk. And that one also caught on fire. So right away, they went to the best possible solution, the atomic bomb, because it worked so well the first time. So they did the same thing and with the same method, they closed this one out as well. And of course, they pumped a lot of radiation in that area. You might think, why don't they close the gates of hell of Turkmenistan like this? This wasn't the same thing. It wasn't really a well. It was basically a sinkhole that was created all of a sudden. And then USSR official realized that there was a lot of natural gas exiting this and making the local people very sick. So when we get to 1971, the Soviets realized the best thing we could do is light a match and throw it in there. But of course they didn't do it like that. They basically set it on fire because they would rather have it on fire but it creates less toxic gas for the locals than to fix it properly. And it has been on fire for about 50 years now. This isn't a gas well where the gas pumps out at a very high pressure. This just leaks through and it keeps this place on fire. Maybe later on there's technology where they could put this fire out but right now they can't. We have gas walls pretty much everywhere in the world, but no country sets them on fire like the USSR. Once again in the year 1981, the USSR set a gas wall on fire in Ukraine. And of course, their only option in their mind was to nuclear blast it. So for the last time, this method was used in Ukraine. After Ukraine suffered all this and a lot of radiation entered, only five years after this took place, Chernobyl decided to explode. And it pretty much not only destroyed the city, but a whole lot of areas around it. The US and the USSR continued blasting throughout their history. And it seems like sometimes they would treat it as a joke. The last atomic bomb testing that took place was in 1992 by the American. And then four years later, when we get to 1996, most countries signed something called the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. And that basically tells every country to stop testing nuclear weapons. But after this, two more countries tested their nuclear weapons. The first one was in 1998 by Pakistan. And the last one was by North Korea 
in the year 2017. It seems like these nuclear testing and bombs are not gonna stop anytime soon. What do you guys think? Что же произошло там под землей? Ударная волна ядерного взрыва сдвинула пласты земли, которые перекрыли скважину. 